What's up, guys? Hey. Welcome to the weightlifting scoop. Hello. That was really deep. <laughs> That's what she said. Uh, oh, <laughs> man. <laughs> terrible, terrible. Anyways, guys, we got James Tatum, uh, Sean Rigsby, and Don McCauley here, and I am the super duper Travis Cooper. Um. <laughs> you see what he did there? <laughs> super duper Travis Cooper. That's what he did there. It's pretty neat. Yeah. I wish I could come up with something like that for my name. <laughs> we'll wow. find something by the end of the show. Yeah. <laughs> so what, what you been doing um, outside of coaching weightlifting, Don? You've been drinking a lot of wine lately? I, I have not. I've been taking a, a little bit of wine. I've, we, all, <laughs> we have all noticed that it obviously affects my memory. <laughs> What's a little bit? Uh, one, of, one of my, uh, one of my uh, lifters out in California sent me a, a present, uh, Vu, Vu Trong. Sent me a present, a couple of bottles of nice California wine. Very nice stuff. Very nice stuff. James has been drinking wine, too. Uh, what kind of wine have you been drinking? You know, we were just trying to figure out what the name of it was. But uh, all, I've always called it chicken wine. And it's got this uh, – it's, well, it's not actually – well, it's a rooster yes. on the front of it. Yeah. And on the front, it says, like, uh, record-winning 57-pound rooster. It's $5 wine. It's pretty good. Oh, it, it's wonderful. <laughs> well, it – they trick you into buying it because it says sixteen ninety nine and it has a cross over it all the time, and then it says five ninety nine for the price. So you think you're getting one hell of a deal. How can you pass that up? You can't. <laughs> Get you every time. Yeah. Has anybody here ever uh, drank and then lifted weights, like wine specifically? When I was doing some bodybuilding type type training, we would go super low carb for a good while. Let's say like two weeks. And then, uh, then we'd have a glass of wine and then we'd do a workout to get a pump. And then your veins just go crazy. You get all sorts of vascular and you look, uh, you look kind of scary. I mean, I've done that before. Is that how you got so vascular? <laughs> I, I don't know. I hope so. Cause then that would have, wouldn't sound so dumb, but that's what we did. <laughs> Hopefully it worked. <laughs> well, no, one time I went to a wine tasting and, and then I, I went to training afterwards, and it was around January two years ago, and we maxed out. I was, I was fucking ballsy, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Making big jumps. I didn't make a lot of the weights, but I'm I was shocked. going for it. I'm shocked. I mean, I did snatch 130. I was pretty drunk. Uh, you go to a wine taste, and that's not a joke. They, they shove the wine down your throat. Yeah. They do. They make you try everything, you know, the red wines, the white wines. I don't know. You know that everything in between. you're supposed to spit that out <laughs> at <laughs> wine tastings. But, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, unless you're really trying to get drunk. I, I mean, I was like the redneck at the party. I was just, you know, they're like, oh, you can spit that. Nope. <laughs> like, you need you need to shake that around and smell it first. And, and you need to let the air in your mouth with the wine. I don't know. It just seems like a lot of work. I don't I don't understand why you would want to do all that just to just to taste one sip of wine. Speaking of rednecks and drinking, uh I saw a commercial for a show uh made by the producers of Jersey Shore called Party Down South. This should be interesting. It's kind of like the redneck version of Party uh not Party uh whatever that show is, Jersey Shore. Jersey Shore with uh with Snooky. Oh goodness. Can we really lower the bar any more than that? I mean, oh, I think they did. Yeah, well, we need <laughs> I didn't to. Think they were successful. Well, Sean, you're you're from California, right? Yeah, yeah. So uh, you need to learn a little bit about the South. We got <laughs> we got a few things that you can watch. I just watched Duck Dynasty. Uh, uh, Duck you, Dynasty, a lot of toddlers and tiaras. You can watch mm, you Louisiana. Can watch, you can watch Duck Dynasty a little bit. You, you need to watch Honey Boo Boo. Honey, that's the toddlers. Isn't that the toddlers? Yeah, person? yeah, it's like the, the same original? girl. Yeah. Same girl. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. On my education, I refuse to watch. That. No, but you, you know what's funny? I forget where I was at. I think I was in Australia with Glenn. We were doing a seminar, and this uh, this girl asked me where I'm from, and I said Atlanta, and she goes, "Oh, that's where Honey Boo Boo's from, right?" Oh, great. And I'm like, "Yeah, kind of, but." I'm ashamed that that, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Atlanta is a great city. We've hosted the Olympics. We have an awesome aquarium. I mean, there's a lot of great well, things about Atlanta. World's largest aquarium, I might add. Yeah, some, something like that. I've been there. It's fantastic. It's an awesome aquarium. I mean, we got, 
Well, the Atlanta Braves were the team of the 90s. Um, the Falcons suck on a regular basis. We did make it to the Super Bowl one year. Coca-Cola? Coca-Cola is that's a great even, company. That's still better they, than... They created Santa Claus. They, they, basically. So, Or at least as we know him yeah. today, they created Santa Claus. And she remembers Atlanta because Honey Boo Boo lives within an hour of Atlanta. So she was like, oh, you, you, you know Honey Boo Boo. I'm like, no, it's a big city. You know, I don't, I don't like, <laughs> we're slightly different ages, so I'm not that familiar with her. God we don't, we don't hang out. <laughs> I, I think we ought to watch what television shows we allow to be exported. Well, internationally, yeah. Know, Why are they I mean, playing that in Australia? It's embarrassing. Hell. Yeah. I, I feel like there's so many different sects of southern people. You got the people from West Virginia in the movie Deliverance. <laughs> then you got Honey Boo Boo. Was, was that West Virginia? I, I, I don't the, know whether that was Louisiana. Louisiana. I'm not sure. I thought it was in the mountains of West Virginia. I, I'm I not could, 100%. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. You, they are in a, a river. I don't remember. It's yeah. been a while since I've seen that one. But the, then you got things like Black Snake Moan and uh, I don't know, Poor White Trash. <laughs> I, I, I mean, these are some <laughs> Mississippi Burning. Every, yeah. Everybody is is looking. Dazed and confused right now. I'm from New England, so I've got nothing here. I'm I'm from Atlanta, and I'm confused. And so, anyways, um, I'm just saying the South is diverse. It, it is certainly diverse. How strange it can the be. Appalachians. Well, I mean, let's be real, Sean. I mean, California is diverse, right? Yeah, diverse is not the word I would use for the South uh, <laughs> compared to where I come from. <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, okay, that's, that's, I'm, I'm just I'm just saying the, say. there there's there's a lot of different people in California. You know, you you have like a large Asian community, you know, large well, yeah. African American community, uh, Hispanic community. Uh, you come to the South, it's like there's two kinds of people here. You know, I, I don't remember the last time I saw like an Indian guy. Yeah. <laughs> well, in, in Atlanta, no, I think that comes with more like big cities. I mean, we are near Charlotte, but we're not in the heart of Charlotte. We're in Fort Meal, really. That's true. Um, so. For some reason, I said that funny. Fort meal. Fort, Fort, Fort meal. Fort meal. <laughs> Obviously, you're hungry. <laughs> you need some food. You've been getting a little bit of the Texas accent Texas in there. Accent. I, I don't know. In any case, what have we got weightlifting-wise to talk about? Oh, ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> Don, I am so tired of weightlifting. Oh, I was yeah? doing so yeah. many reps. Oh, yeah. I know. Twos, threes. <laughs> Crazy reps. You disguise sets of two as being sets of four. Yeah. yeah. Well, that compound exercise. Oh, let's, appreciate let's, that. Do, <laughs> let's do two reps of a high-low clean. Nope. That, that, oh, that's four cleans. I figured. I didn't figure you guys would figure that out <laughs> quickly. Don't worry. They'll all be going away soon. Oh, thank You'll God. You'll miss them. <laughs> uh, it's really, it, maybe not. It's really not that bad. We're, uh, you know, obviously this is kind of our prep phase for the entire year. Um so we are getting a little more variation and training and hitting the hitting the the glutes and the hammies, me specifically because I found that's a weakness. Um, but yeah, so we're just giving Don a hard time. And I like to complain a lot. Actually excited to train. Who's the latest diva? Who's the diva now? Who's leading in the James, diva? James won diva the day to day because uh, we were trying to start this episode about fifteen minutes before we did. Oh, that's right. And <laughs> well, and for some reason, like I think me, he and, had to go to entourage parking. Me and James like live in the same house, and we decided to drive separately because I have to leave a little early today. <laughs> and uh, and he was right behind me, and somehow it took him fifteen more minutes to get here. I had to brush my beard. <laughs> it's well, a little got, bit crazy. Well, then definitely Diva the Day. Yeah, right, 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 right. Yeah. Uh, You're yeah. trying to appeal to the so audience's you emotions. I, I don't believe that's true. I think mm-hmm. Dean's taking the lead lately. I think he's got three. I think I think Dean. we need to change Diva of the Day to Joker of the Day. You just want to win every day, though. That's well, I mean, you're, you're you're playing it to your advantage. You come in with jokes every day out of your joke book. Yeah, I mean, so, I 101 mean, funny bunny jokes are pretty good. <laughs> I mean, uh, what was everything's one, uh, a competition. You're going to create a dynasty. It's not. <laughs> what what, uh, what was the joke about about the bunny and uh, um, fast? No, I don't remember that one. <laughs> I'm going to look that one Again, up. But we, we, we do have a weightlifting topic. We do chicken, chicken wine. Affected yeah. the memory. Yeah, chicken, chicken wine can. messed up my bunny jokes. That's what I'm saying. We do have a weightlifting topic. Um, oh. So one thing particularly was, um, I don't know, James, explain it. Limit strength. 
All right, yeah. So we were talking about limit strength and uh, kind of coming from like the, um, let's say, some type of strength. You need to be able to do a certain amount on squat to, if you're a football player, to be like eligible to play in the lineman or something uh, at different levels. So we were kind of looking at like the um, how strong you have to be and trying to transfer those over to uh, to weightlifting. So, like, how strong does your bench press have to be to be able to clean and jerk 200 kilos? Can it be only, like, 100 kilos? Or would you benefit from something being able to do, like, 125 for a set of five? When would be, what's the point where getting stronger in the bench press has no carryover? You only have to do a certain amount before it doesn't carry over again. Any thoughts on that? I think that goes through all sports with all lifts, or, or all the bigger lifts anyway. I think, uh, you know, certainly there's a, well, take, take the back squat, which is generally thought of as the, the uh, factor in weightlifting, the move in weightlifting that uh, everything can be compared with uh, one way or another. And I think there's a, there's a good reason to have a, a certain amount of back squat strength, and past that amount, I don't think there's any more reason. To have it. I think if you, you know, you get to a certain level and that's pretty accepted and fairly well known. Uh, but if you get much past that, I don't know that you're doing any more good. And most weightlifters that I've ever heard of as they go on in their careers, uh, eventually phase out the back squat to some extent because they don't need any more. They've got enough. If they're a 300 kilo back squatter, they don't need to be a 400 kilo back squatter. They need to be better in their technique and quicker. And probably, again, don't need any more strength that that's going to give them. And every sport's like that. Every sport's different for that. Yeah. I, uh, I've i got a few. I got a little chart that someone put up. And uh, it's kind of neat. Like um, they were saying, like the limit strength or to be able to do a 220 kilo jerk, you'd have to be able to do a full squat with at least 385 kilos. No, two, 285. 285, sorry. Yeah. This thing's small and I didn't read it real well. <laughs> Um, and that comes out to be like 78% or something. Yeah, generally uh, the chart that I've got, uh, the, the, the old, well, the Russian chart from I think the 80s, basically says the clean and jerk should be about 80% of what your back squat for a single rep max should be. A single rep max in the clean and jerk is around 80%. I think that's pretty pure. I, I mean, I've had guys that are stronger like that. That works out to be, well, like you said, 78%. 80%, something like that. So you're 20% stronger in the back squat. Yeah. Uh, that seems to be works. I, I think you need to be at least that. I think that's yeah, a guy that's like that. Like I've good. had guys that were stronger than that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, and again, it didn't necessarily translate to more back squat. <laughs> you know, it depends on their technique too. Yeah. And yeah. the quickness and flexibility and all that other stuff. But that 20% or so difference seems to be pretty well accepted in most charts and yeah. graphs there are. So there's a pretty good, uh, that Russian chart that you have is a pretty good, um, it's got a lot of percentages with a lot of the main weightlifting yeah, movements. Yeah, it's a pretty good guide. Um, so we were kind of thinking like, okay, so there's this very high correlation between squatting this much and being able to clean and jerk this much. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wonder if there's some more specific things. Actually, Travis came up with this idea where you could add two lifts together and that would give you a better correlation between your Well, some people are more efficient than others. So, I mean, could there be a reason? Like if someone squats less than another person but cleans or or cleans the same but they both have good technique, does one person have a stronger upper body to like change their body's direction? I mean, what's the reason for that? So could you add their, I don't know, I mean, this is just basic, but could you add their snatch, I mean, sorry, their squat and their bench press and take a percentage of that and then see if that is closer, if that makes them closer in percentage? Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I don't think anybody's ever ever done something like that uh, with the upper body, uh, let, let's call them the upper body kind of strength moves to the lower body kind of strength moves and kind of figured out if there was a correlation between putting some those two together somehow and saying, oh, then yeah. you're, then you're and the bench press is going to be here or something. The bench press would be in a different plane, so that, yeah. that probably wouldn't be correlated. But, but something like an incline press, press or something or like a, that. You know, or maybe an upright row or just something random. I don't know, you know. It was just kind of an idea. 
Well, I mean, you know, the <laughs> ideas like this are how, you know, different uh, things are thought, different uh, ways of thinking are thought of. Um, you know, the graphs that are around now weren't around before the 80s. They they didn't think of those things. They didn't think there was a relationship. Uh, there was a time, you know, 50s, 50s, 60s, nobody thought back squatting was very important. And the arms aren't really, in, now that you can brush the body and bring the bar in well, and extend with your hips, the the... The arms are not engaged for very long, but there is an instantaneous, like a reactive strength. Is that what you call that kind of strength, yeah. James? Like a reactive strength where you really, for a split second, you pull really hard to engage your body's um, change of direction. So that's a different kind of strength than a limit bench press, you know? Yeah. I mean, you got the reactive strength, and then you have even like starting strength, be able to, people that can actually pick the bar up off the floor easily from a dead stop as opposed to people who can't pick the bar up off the floor as easily or as quickly and efficiently. This is something we've talked about over the last two or three weeks for one reason or another. One of the, well, one of the reasons is that the graph that I use, uh, makes the back squat and the clean deadlift equal in importance. And I've, I've known a couple of lifters, um, that had very decent back squats that didn't have very decent clean deadlifts. And their clean was not very good. It wasn't, it didn't compare to where their back squat was. When they got better at the clean deadlift, suddenly their back squat and their, their uh, clean and jerk started to come in line. You don't, you don't say don't. I've, I've seen it happen. (laughs) Well, I would say, I mean, this kind of applies to me because I can squat more than I can deadlift. And, um, so my clean in comparison to my squat is not exactly on the aligning with the percentages, but it exactly aligns with the percentage of my deadlift. So, is is the difference about the twenty percent we're talking about between your deadlift and your your clean and jerk? Uh, yes, yeah. It's, you know, we'll say it's that a, would be more important to me. I mean, you might mm-hmm. you're a guy that just has the build to do extra squatting stuff. You you know your maximum is um, way up there. So with the uh, I guess the percentage that I've seen, which turns out to be about 77% of your, your back squat is you should be able to back squat 131% of your clean and jerk. Um, so, um, uh, my max deadlift is about exactly 131% of my max clean, but I squat slightly more than that. Yeah. So. You know. Yeah. And then, well, for on the other end of that spectrum, yeah, you have me where I can clean pull. Uh, I I can do two fifty for a set of three, without losing any of my positions, but I can only back squat like uh, two twenty. Um, so my uh, my snatch and my clean and jerk are kind of limited by my squat, and they're right in those percentages. But the uh, the power clean and power snatch percentages are skewed higher. I can yeah. do higher than those percentages because there are more. I don't know. Based off of your pull, yeah, based off which I have my move strength. Off the floor. And uh, something else that's interesting is, I uh, I've, I've changed my squat technique. Well, my stance. So I'm squatting a little bit wider. I'm getting a little bit more glute activation. I'm staying more upright in my squat. Um, but I'm actually squatting a lot less. But my clean has gone up. My clean and my jerk have both gone up a lot, even though I'm squatting less, but with more of a transferable type of uh squat but uh, i can't squat i can't squat 220 like that uh i could probably squat 200 like that but after that i'd probably single yeah for a single yeah Yeah, well that's you have you know you have you have done this relatively recently and there's going to be that change over time i think by the summer you're going to start to see that back squat shoot up a little bit and then i'll clean and jerk 191 it could happen yeah. Could happen. Who knows? Yeah. You know what? That's why I clean and jerked 182 where I cleaned it is uh, I was doing some pulls with 191 and they felt super light. I was like, man, I could, I could clean this. And, uh, so that kind of gave me the confidence because it just kind of <laughs> went under 182 and went for it and I just happened to make it. Yeah. Although my best front squat's 192. Well, that's, that's why in my mind, I think this is pretty pure. That the the back squat for for Olympic weightlifters, the back squat and that clean deadlift have got to be both at, at least minimally strong, at least that twenty percent difference, uh, because you got no matter how much you back squat, the clean deadlift's a hell of a lot more like the position you're going to be in when you move weight from the floor, 
And that's that's where you've got to be strong, that breaking so when, the floor weight. When, so traditionally, you know, if you do a powerlifting back squat and a powerlifting deadlift, most people can deadlift more, right? But Yeah, but, but that, doesn't, what, that doesn't mean the same thing. Right, right. But, uh, yeah, so I want to clarify for everyone what we're talking about here is a, is a high bar um, upright squat, as low as you can get, and a clean deadlift mimicking – the clean positions that we teach at the Penlay Seminar. So bringing the bar in, shoulders come over the bar, bring the shoulders back, bar into the hip, that kind of clean deadlift, not just picking the bar up with high hips. Yeah, it doesn't make any difference if you're picking the bar up with high hips or you're a sumo deadlifter. That's not going to That's not gonna equate. And now when you do um, those two lifts in that manner, do you think your ultimate potential in those two lifts is equal or... Um, do you think you have more potential in the deadlift or the squat or depending on your body levers? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it depends on the body levers. But what we're talking about is what's going to help you be a better Olympic lifter. A better Olympic lifter is to have those two fairly equal and be up about 20 to you know 20%, a little more than 20% above what you expect to clean and jerk. Now, some guys like James, <coughs> I mean, James, what, um, what do you think your potential in – uh, a deadlift, a clean deadlift would be if you really paid attention to it only. Um, I I feel like I could probably get close to like two seventy. Yeah, um, something like that. Yeah, right? and probably not as much in the squat. Yeah, my yeah for the squat. If I well, I've been working on squat for years, yeah, and it's yeah. always been kind of lagging behind. Yeah. Um, I think I could probably squat in the high two thirties. I feel yeah. like I can yeah. get there. Yeah, at least that. Yeah, I would think so. Towards 250, I think, eventually. But um, well, but see, again. So basically, we're coming up with you need to program more pulls for me and more squats for James. Right, and that's one of, <laughs> that, that's one of these things that, that, that the good graphs will show you. They not only you know kind of show you your potential, but they show you your strengths and weaknesses, which should mean I should work some more of these, I should work some more of those. Well, so, so real quick, let's run through the numbers. Um the numbers that I've seen, so uh, is in general, <laughs> when I you're see when you're making your uh, program, <laughs> you should be able to squat about 131 percent of your clean and jerk. You should be able to snatch 80 percent or more of your clean and jerk, and um, and what other ratios? You should be able to clean deadlift the same as your back squat. Yeah. Um, are those about the same as what oh. you go by? Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I'm looking at my chart on the wall, so it's kind of easy for me right now. But yeah, I can go right down the list. At, and again, this is an old Russian chart. Uh, this is, by the way, a, a man's chart. Uh, I couldn't read that. <laughs> but basically, the the clean deadlift and the back squat are put at 100 percent. Front squat should be about 80, 89 percent of that. Uh, clean and jerk should be about 80 percent of that that original number. Uh, Push press should be about 74. Um, power, clean. power clean should be about 68. Snatch should be about 64. Did you say 74? Push yep. press? Yep. Um, power snatch should be about 55, and, and standing press should be about 45. Now, I, I say two things to people about this, about this chart. Uh, one, it came from an age... Uh, even though the chart didn't start appearing until the 80s, it came from a lot of coaches that coached a lot of guys that were coaching in the ages of uh, when the press was a lift, a competitive lift. So I think some of these things are a little shoulder strong on the percentages. So Sean just uh, did his percentage for his uh, and he push do, press. He can do 100%? No, <laughs> no. <but> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> tell he us do as the, much with the shoulder, the push press as he can with a back squat. Yeah, tell, us, uh, tell us what that push press what came out to, What was that push Sean? press come out to? Uh, 188. <laughs> and I'm, and I'm, I'm really strong at anything pretty much overhead. You know, so I, you did and, one, I can, and I can press a lot of things out. And, and you've clean and jerked 175. Yeah. So you should never do a push press again. <laughs> no, 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 no. He, I'm saying, oh, he's no, saying oh, that's what that chart says. I'm saying says, the chart says it? I should push press 188. I only push press like 162. Well, yes, but you're you're a guy. Well, I mean, that I, has... I've never really tried to go. I've never, I've never, I did a one. The, the, the time I push press 162, I was dicking around and I did it after a clean. Like, I've never done a one max push press. You're a guy very much like uh, Travis, who has an exceptional squat. 
much more than the 20% difference between right, but potential. I don't yeah. think if I put 188 on a bar right now that I'd go push press it is what I'm saying <laughs> according to that. Well, that's standard. kind of coming along the lines of well, where the press but, used to be know, in the competition. Yeah, like, that's true. That's thing. true. The press used to be, you know, a lot more heavily yeah, involved. Yeah, and so. and most of the lifters today, I when I use this chart and especially uh, well, when I use it with most men today and when I use it with all women today, I take some percentages off in anything that's the upper body uh shoulder involved lifts because generally they're just not going to be as strong because they they don't and shouldn't put the time in on those lifts that they used to yeah do you think sometimes the upper body is overlooked in modern training a little too much or? oh i do think it's overlooked too much in modern training yes because although the upper body certainly doesn't have to be as strong as it used to be uh because there's no competitive lift that means that it's still going to be strong enough to withstand the punishment of whatever the legs and and yeah. Uh, hips can bring up to it. Uh, yeah, you gotta you gotta have very yeah. strong and that's body what, to do that. Yeah, me and James were talking a little bit earlier about having minimum strength and in, in, yeah. in the press and push press just for injury prevention, basically. Yes, um, absolutely. Cause, more more so with women, I think too. Yeah, because I mean, if you're if you're doing a snatch and it's it's drifting behind, you want to have the strength, just a little bit of extra strength, just so if it's drifting back, your arm doesn't pop. Until you let, so you have time to <laughs> yeah, let you go. You don't want your arm to pop. You know, um, I mean, you, you dislocate an elbow, you never have the same, um, the same, I don't, I don't know how to explain it. The same, like, I have the tiger attitude. You're always kind of worried about that particular weight that's on the bar again. Oh, sure. Um, Plus, there's the physical injury to it. I mean, yeah. you, you usually end up with slightly less range of motion. At the yeah. elbow and stuff like that as well. Most people can get back physically, but I, I think mentally, like when you have major injuries, that's probably the biggest thing you have to overcome on the way back. A lot of people can get back physically, but um, anyways. Uh, so on a note that we were talking about earlier, the chicken wine <laughs> is called Rex Goliath. That's what that, God, thank you. I guess that was the name of the rooster that was 57 pounds. That was just killing me. A record-holding rooster. <laughs> We're going later. It's a very After good, training. cheap wine. Yeah, and it's a, it's, it's a pretty good one. <laughs> All right, so we're going to go get a bottle before training. <laughs> right now, yeah, we're getting ready. The second see, half of this show should be really good. Because, uh, you know, you got to see it's important to know who can lift the the highest percentage of their max drunk. <laughs> that's, a, that's key. Yeah, so that's where does key. that percentage come in? in our <laughs> I, would say, I would say the percentage has to be multiplied by the time between the lifting and the drinking, and then basically you, you're zero if it's very close. All right, so mathematical equation. Uh, yeah. James took a picture of this chart, so we kind of went through those percentages very yeah. quickly. Um, he will post that to Instagram, his Instagram. So follow him at. Oh, my Instagram is James Tatum USA. I think that's it. Yep, that's it. Yeah. So follow him for that picture. Um, hopefully he'll be able to post it to the comments on Spreaker to this episode. Um, so check that out. I think it's important information to know when you're programming. To know your strengths and weaknesses and know what you should program more because everyone is not the same, you know? Like James has a great deadlift, um, and his squat is good, but not as good as his deadlift. And likewise with me, I'm the opposite. So my squat's pretty high in comparison to my lifts, but, you know, my deadlift, holding my back tight is my problem. So I'm working on that and try to get my clean deadlift up. And, um, and so... Maybe we shouldn't do exactly the same thing every day. You know, most of the time we do because we're trying to create a competitive environment. But, you know, on our weakness days, we need to work on different things. So, imagine that. Imagine that. Yeah, well, <laughs> I mean, uh, honestly, a lot of people don't have any idea what these percentages should be even around. And, and a lot of people, if if they happen to have done a lot of strength training and they've got a big, big back squat – they take everything, they expect everything to go right with the back squat, and it may not be true. It's funny because my, my uh, front squat, back squat, perfect. Like exactly the standard. I did the math on it. Those are perfect. Like a lot of the strength numbers for me yeah. are exactly where they need to be. And then I go and I look at the snatch and clean and jerk. And it's like, well, the jerk is probably high. I don't even know. Well, the, the jerk, jerk alone, but yeah. not the clean and jerk. Yeah, but the clean and the snatch anyway, definitely lagging behind. Which is, which is why we're doing the things we are. You've been helping me a lot, working a lot on 
fixing some yeah, so things. So technique so. and that skill of weightlifting, you're still relatively new to the sport, so that's expected. Um, you know, a strong guy. Yeah. Um, so anyways, we do... What I was going to... Do you guys have anything more on that before we we move on or... I think that's I think that's covered. I think that's pretty well covered. I think we covered uh, especially the differences maybe in the modern weightlifter compared to the older weightlifters, uh, and the fact that again you remember with most of these charts, especially the ones that came out of Europe, they mostly mostly uh, apply to men only. Mm -hmm. uh, so for yeah. women, they have to look at some of this stuff. I think pretty much from what I've seen. The Olympic lifts are still pretty much in the ball game as far as being compared to the the squat and the deadlift uh, together. Um, of course, the, the the things like the standing press and the push press, <coughs> things like that, are going to be a little different. I usually give I'll, I'll, I'll give up to five to ten percent difference for hard. women, at least. No, I haven't really been involved in uh, women's weightlifting too much. Well, I mean, I know snatch and clean jerk numbers, but I don't really know any string numbers now. A lot of the women who have been good over time, like the past, you know, since 2000, did they have strong upper? Were they stronger in the upper body than the women competitors that weren't quite as good? Or is that I, I not think necessarily that's, true? I think that's fairly true. Uh, most of the women that I can recall back through, back through the mid 90s who were the better women, uh, were also pretty strong in the upper body relative to the other competitors they had. I think, uh, I think, of course, for protection, I think it's good for everybody to keep that upper body strong. But I especially think it's uh, crucial for women too because they are so strong uh, relatively in the hips and legs uh, that they can get uh, they can get into trouble with what their shoulders and arms uh, can put up with. Well, yeah, so women do your pull-ups, um, yep. which I think, you know, obviously in CrossFit, muscle-ups and pull-ups. It took a lot, stands, it took like a lot longer for women to catch on to those exercises, but now that CrossFit's a little older, um, pretty much all, well, definitely all competitive CrossFitter uh, women can do those things, whereas I would say the average woman couldn't do that before, so that's definitely a good thing. You know, I heard somewhere <clears throat> that... Uh, Women have, as far as like upper body movements, they have the most potential to get stronger in the pull up compared to their squat than uh, any of their other lifts. So like bench press or or their overhead press or anything, they have more potential to get stronger at the uh, at their pull uh, the pull up uh, even more than men comparatively to the squat. Yeah, could be. I mean, I've never <laughs> I've never looked at that. I never thought of that, but. Um... You know, relatively, the the pull up in and of itself is a is a, a lat move with a shoulder involvement and an arm involvement. But uh, the back is is an area that most women who are athletic uh, have a lot of potential to uh, to uh, gain strength in uh, if it's if you start to work it. Uh, and most back exercises uh, go along with hip extension, so uh, the the potential for gaining strength there is probably pretty great. What next? How do you make a slow bunny hungry? <laughs> oh, not a bunny joke. Oh, my God. You make uh, him fast. Oh. I don't know. That's fast. that's not exactly how the joke's you worded, make him but fast. <laughs> I thought that was a pretty good joke. Yeah, that's a pretty good one. Uh, <laughs> yeah, if that's a pretty good one. <laughs> Jokes for the day. We, we have a very low bar. <laughs> oh, they're, they're pretty funny. I, I'll tell you what. Trevor Britton is... Uh, very good at these jokes. The funniest person. Yeah. I think Trevor's got the best delivery, the comic delivery, as we say. And uh, I'm sure some of our CrossFit listeners uh, probably know this person, uh, Shayna Alverson. Uh, <laughs> she has some pretty good jokes. And uh, it's very funny to hear her tell a joke because she thinks her jokes are so funny, which, of course, I think they're funny, too. They're great. Um, they're kind of they're on the corny side, which is like what I like, corny jokes. But uh, as she's telling it, she can barely get the joke out because she's laughing so hard. It, uh, it's pretty funny. Trevor's cold-blooded. He just comes in. His delivery is so smooth. Yeah. And, and does such great comedic time. I keep well, telling him he needs, to, he needs to go to the comedy zone and open up, do something. We asked him what uh, he wanted to listen to before training one day, and he said, uh, he said not so slim shady. 
And we said, oh, you mean Slim Shady? He said, no, Slim Shady's fat cousin. <laughs> just... and, then, and then he was like, no, never mind. I want to listen to the new Christian rapper, Him and M. <laughs> It's so, so corny. Oh, like, I, I, don't yeah, know, yeah, yeah. I don't know if he goes home and, like, tries these jokes out on Andrea or if he just is so, you know, good at just coming up with it on the spot. I don't know what the deal is, but he's a funny guy when he wants to be. So on on the serious side, injuries do happen in weightlifting and CrossFit at a high level. Um, there was a guy named Kevin Ogre. A lot of you guys have probably heard of this. Uh, he was in a CrossFit competition. It was the OC Throwdown. Is that correct? Yeah, that's um, right. So he he dropped a snatch. I don't know exactly what happened. I don't think anyone knows exactly what happened unless they saw it firsthand because you know how the game of telephone works. Um, but he dropped the bar on his back, supposedly uh, potentially broke his spinal cord. Uh, so he, he's had a couple surgeries already. He did not have health insurance. So if you guys can, if you have a couple extra bucks, if you could go to fundly, F-U-N-D-L-Y dot com forward slash Kevin dash ogre dash S dash recovery. Um, the CrossFit community has been great. They're trying to raise 200 grand uh, for these first couple surgeries because he did not have health insurance. And uh, so far they've raised $156,000 and every penny counts. Um, so if you guys could do that. Travis, could you spell that last name? Is it okay? Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Kevin in the standard way: K E V I N, Ogre O G A R. So, and one more thing, really quick. Um, aside from the funly, which everybody should do, if you want to also donate money, but go directly to Kevin, uh, Matt Hathcock, who's a pretty outstanding CrossFit athlete. If you just Look up Matt Hathcock on Facebook. He has a lot of information on how you can donate to Kevin and help him out in ways other than Fundly. Because Fundly does take a percentage of the money that gets donated, just like, you know, any website would. But they've, Matt Hathcock has been involved in, like, setting up, like, a whole account and ways that the money will go directly to him. But the Fundly is still a great way of doing it. Just look up Matt Hathcock and he'll have lots of information on how you can help Kevin. So, yeah, like we said, definitely injuries do happen at a high level no matter what. Um, so... You know, don't don't point the finger at anyone. Um, you know, injuries just happen. It's just the way it is. And and typically, worst case scenario does not happen. And um and and this was one of those you know tragic injuries. So wish them the best. And um so far things are going well. So um on a lighter note, uh, me and James we had a Skype session with Clint Darden yesterday. Some of you guys might know him. And the house of biceps <laughs> so he's he's going to make a a guest appearance on our show tuesday he's going to call us in on skype uh we're going to talk to him for an, for an hour to an hour and a half episode next tuesday so if you guys have any questions first of all look up who clint darden is on youtube and then uh if you have any questions based on on that please send them to us and we will uh, we'll have those questions answered on the episode. You guys got anything else? I'm shot. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, that, I feel like we uh, we covered quite a bit. Got the Rex Goliath wa- wine in there. That was pretty important. That was an important point. If Rex Goliath is listening to this, we could use a case. <laughs> we could. Uh, they, so they you could should, send that to, what, what's the address here? 587. 587. 587 Green, Industrial Green Drive. Way so industrial be drive. Well received here. We could use a case yeah. of, well, of the wine. That's probably right before they throw the weightlifting team out of here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so if you want to see that picture on the percentages, check out James Tatum on uh, Instagram, at James Tatum USA. At James Tatum USA, and now I took a picture of what Don wrote on the uh, on his whiteboard, <laughs> and uh, Don writes very small, so it's a little and hard. Legibly, <laughs> it, well, I mean, it's good handwriting. It is. It's just very small. So it's it, very small. You might have to like take a screenshot of it and zoom in a little bit, but it's all there. Yep. Follow me at Dozer TDC on Instagram. Tweet us your questions at WLiftingScoop. Email us your questions at theweightliftingscoop at gmail.com. Sean and Don. Hey, we'll see you next time. We're going to start. I'm going to be going. Oh, I'm going to be going down to uh, Florida this weekend. 
uh, give a Glenn Pendlake uh, clinic down at Broward County CrossFit. Travis and I are traveling down. We're going to yak it up and lift it. Well, Travis is going to do a lot of lifting this weekend. <laughs> I'm not going to do a hell of a lot. Um, and uh, we'll be down there in a couple of days. Yeah, we have some we have some open spots on that. So contact us, uh, Steve Bowser, Stephen Bowser, um, Steve Bowser at Broward CrossFit. Sign up for that seminar. Me and Don will be doing that. Uh, Don, you have another seminar. Oh, I'm going out that, uh, right? to California uh, next week. I'm going to be out there actually for about five days working with uh, Jacob Tipkin. Who? Huh? Rumpelstiltskin. Never heard of him. Never heard of him. Um, and his guys. I'm going to give a. Cl- uh, uh, clinic out there the Saturday. I, I mean, what is the Saturday? The the twenty fifth. Uh, I'm going to give a clinic on the twenty fifth out there. Uh, if you're out in that area, Monterey Bay area, come on down and uh, we'll uh, we'll clinic you up in the weightlifting technique. Well, while we're on clinics, I know James has a clinic this weekend that he has spots open. Yeah, at my gym in uh, Smithfield, North Carolina. So if you ever uh, it's near Raleigh, exit 95 on 95. Uh, come check it out. Oh, got to give my brother a p- plug. He went down to uh, Murfreesboro, Tennessee last week and gave a clinic down there. Where was that? What uh, CrossFit was that, James? Uh, it was CrossFit Rampage. We had yeah. a good group out there. I mean, yeah. I think that was one of the more successful clinics that I've ever given. I mean, they, I think maybe two people out of 25 didn't get a PR, which that's that's pretty rare. Usually it's like if half the people do well and get a PR at the seminar, I'm excited. Uh, so they all did great. So we were down there in Murfreesboro, and uh, it turns out that uh, Don McCauley's brother has a restaurant down there. <laughs> nobody's Business is yeah. the name of it. Yeah, so we went and told everybody, and then uh, they were like, oh, yeah, everybody knows Nobody's. And uh, so we went there, and we had a good meal and had a salad with some some grilled chicken on it, and they even had Angry Orchard there for me. You had a salad? They, they didn't throw Deacon out? Yeah, they, di- they didn't throw Deacon out. Uh for those of you who don't know, Deacon is my business partner. He's the uh, the jolly ginger. He's uh, <laughs> he's like six three, big old ginger beard. Um, the uh, I mean he he's he's big. He's like two hundred and thirty pounds or something. But he's uh, he's an extreme endurance athlete. It's crazy. I don't know how he does it. Doesn't train for it. He's just the best endurance athlete. Um, no, he, and he's very outgoing. I don't outgoing. know how he does anything. Are you really? serious? Oh yeah, I'm serious. I'm no joke. Like. You stick a, you put him on a prowler. He looks nothing like what an endurance athlete. Looks N- like. Not at all. He no. could he could push a prowler a mile with like ninety pounds on it, like and not even stop to rest. I had no idea. It's it's literally like his lactic threshold it must be like better than uh, that uh, the drug addict guy uh, Lance Armstrong. <laughs> oh, oh, gonna oh, cause some trouble on that oh, one. That's bad. That's bad. <laughs> Uh, Travis, time for us to go. <laughs> James is getting sued well, really strong. I was just just looking for a couple of plugs and and uh, that, <laughs> I, I think we took care of that. That got out of hand. So so <laughs> well, let's go train, guys. We're gonna that go lift some weights, quickly. and we will see you either later on this week or uh, or next Tuesday on the episode where Clint Darden's gonna be on. So send us your questions. Bye.